Good evening, everybody. Give everybody a few moments to jump in on the live tonight. a few more people to jump in and uh, I'll get started. I have a few things I need to uh, go over and um, so bear with me please as we uh, discuss this issue. <clears throat> Again, uh, please share the videos. Uh, go to my uh, YouTube channel. Um, Go to my YouTube channel. Please share the videos to those and for those who are um, needing to um, be free from cults and from churches or places that call themselves churches that lead people astray and and hold people hostage, spiritually and mentally speaking, um, through deception, manipulation. What up, though, you see? Uh, deception and, ma and manipulation, intimidation, uh, gaslighting, uh, which involves all of that, uh, guilt tripping, uh, things like that, things of that nature. What's going on, Sister Natasha? How are you doing, my sister? Um, so anyway, let me uh, wait for a few more people to come in, uh, a few more people to come in. Uh, let me make a couple of announcements. Uh, as I said earlier today, um, Regarding regarding the merchandise that I uh, that I'm selling and, and promoting, um, I basically uh, do this on my channel, and so um, I don't have another platform, um, and so hold on, I'm typing this information in. Let me see. Uh, hold on, guys, because I'm getting information as we speak. Uh, so anyway, um, um, so for me, I want to make sure uh, that you all understand my heart. Um, and let me see if I don't do this here quick. I got to do this real quick here. Let me take this one. I'm trying to get this together. All right. Can we do this one here? All right. Okay. I'll do this one here. Okay. It looks like we got enough people here. I want to get started and have to repeat myself a little bit. So, um, okay. So I'm gonna I'm gonna set this aside and uh, let's see. Okay. <clears throat> I'm getting information as we speak, ladies and gentlemen. This is live, so um, okay. All right, so I have what I need. Just got an email, so I, I, I have this one here. So thank you, uh, Miss Anonymous. Appreciate it. I got it. All right. So um, for those of you who know me, I, I, I mentioned earlier regarding the merchandise that I uh, am now promoting. The um, book trap the verse, as you see on my on the crown of my head. And um, if you would like to support it, please do do so. You can inbox me. Uh, my assistant, my account specialist will assist you with that. 
And so the reason why I'm saying that is because I know some people may think uh, that the reason why I'm doing this live or, or, or am exposing uh, yes, sir. I, you know, I do. You know, I got the new, you know, I got the nuclear codes. I got the football too, bro. Um, the, the reason why I'm doing this is not to quote unquote make merchandise, uh, by, um, exposing G Craig Lewis. Okay. Um, I'm doing this because it's my responsibility and mandate as a fellow brother in Christ to expose any and all things that will cause brothers and sisters in Christ, like, like, you know, like yourself, myself to fall into sin. Or to fall away, or to uh, to just be in any type of you know uh, sin. So I know some people may think that oh he's doing this for money, he's trying to sell his merchandise. I want to I want to offer a disclaimer here. Okay, I want to offer a disclaimer. The disclaimer is this: um, I don't do this for money. If anyone gives to 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 what I do, they do it because they see what God is doing through me, and out of appreciation for what God has done. They want to sow into what people are doing for God's people. So that is it. Um, and again, you know, the Bible says in Titus 1, to, to the pure, all things are pure. But to the impure, nothing is pure. Both their consciences and their minds are defiled. Let me just read that because I want people to, to, to get a reference on what I'm, on what I'm referring to here. <clears throat> because again, this is, this is a problem when we, when we have people to try to discredit what God is doing and they're doing it from a sincere heart and they're doing it from a place of, of love and of um, concern for the body of Christ. So Titus 1.15 to the pure, all things are pure, but to those who are defiled and unbelieving, nothing is pure. Both their mind and their conscience are defiled. So those who have ill motives are going to have ill perceptions of you. Um, they, they don't care. Uh, so they'll try to twist and spin what you're doing for God and you see the fruit of what God is doing in your life and they'll try to twist it and make it seem that you're doing it for, for money. Like I said before earlier this afternoon, uh, I drive trucks for a living. I'm, an 18, I'm, I'm a driver. I'm an 18-wheeler driver. I drive trucks for a living. I drive locally for a freight company. Uh, I, I'm not ashamed of that. I believe in, in, in all hard work. There's a prophet, as, as the proverb says. Uh, I make that is how God has uh, allowed me to make my living to support my family. And so uh, anything that I do get extra, that's a blessing. OK, so uh, I'm not in this for, quote unquote, uh, the, the money. I'm in this because this is my mandate for from God and for his glory. So that's that's what I'm here for. Um, so people can can question the motives of what I do. That's fine. Um, but you, you have to take it up with God. Because anyone who knows me, knows me well enough to know, uh, this is not about profit. This is, this is about proclaiming God's truth. This is about helping people who have been helped, who have been helped um, in, in, in what God has called me to do, to be a blessing to, uh, to his people. So if you would like to purchase uh, merchandise here, I'm going to continue doing that. Until God changes, you know, the, the platform or the venue that he wants me to, to do. But, you know, he's given this he's given this to me for that purpose. And so um, so while people are here waiting to hear what I have to say about G. Craig, I'm going to, I'm going to make the, uh, the most out of every opportunity uh, to help people understand that when people say things out of the Bible, they should show you right here. They should show you right there and then you can tell them. So, with that being said, most of you are here because I made the announcement earlier today um, regarding G. Craig Lewis. Uh, I mentioned that there uh, has been a pic of an uh, inappropriate, uh, inappropriate uh, picture or image uh, from one of the women that G. Craig Lewis has had uh, a relationship with. Now, let me just say this. Um, it was not quote unquote, uh, sexual in, in nature. I want to specify that, uh, there was no sexual penetration, but based on the information I'm going to be reading tonight, uh, it was still an inappropriate relationship nonetheless. And it would fall in line, I guess you can say of sexual, uh, sin. Okay. So with that being said, with that being said, I want to preface, um, 
my reason or reasons why I'm going to be presenting uh, quote unquote receipts. But I'm going to do it from a, a biblical perspective. OK, I'm going to do this from a, a biblical perspective. I'm not going to do this for, for shock value. I'm not going to do this because I want to be on someone else's uh, uh, news uh, show or anything like that. I, I want to be biblical. I want to be respectful. I don't want to cause any further shame to anyone that has already experienced shame for what they have done. OK, uh, this is this is for this is for the purpose of credibility. This is also the purpose of making sure that what I say can be supported and backed up uh, biblically. And then also um, for those who have been affected by this, like I said earlier, positively or negatively, then you can be the judge of that. So I have in my possession uh, one of the women who um, reached out to me and actually I've had a conversation with um, um, online. And by the way, my wife is aware of that. Uh, so there's nothing for me to hide about that. Um, but she confided in me with the information uh, that she gave to me. I did promise her that I would not and I make this clear, I would not disclose uh, her name. I would not disclose her her full image. I would not do that. And here's the reason why I'm not going to do that. I'm going to provide the receipt, but I'm going to redact it. And I'm going to redact it for two reasons. Number one, it's not necessary for me to do it. And then number two is borderline pornography or could open up the door or a gateway for pornography or to incite fleshly and sinful lusts. And so the scripture teaches us in Matthew 18, verse six, that if we cause any one of our little ones who believe in him, that is Jesus and God to stumble, Jesus says that we're better off tying a millstone around our neck and being drowned in the depths of the sea. What does that mean? That means I have a responsibility to ensure that I do nothing, absolutely nothing to cause my brothers or sisters or these little ones who believe in me, Jesus' words, to stumble. So I made the decision not to show the image, but I will show a redacted version of the image and will show you proof that G. Craig Lewis, while being pastor and while being a, ma while being a, ma being a married man, had an inappropriate relationship with one of several women that he was involved in and involved with. If you have the blog and if you have the email that I sent to G. Craig Lewis uh, a week ago or so, week, week ago, you know that names were revealed in that. And those names were revealed because the people that I, I attempted to contact were in blatant and, and flat out denial, although they were aware that receipts were were disclosed to them and were, were mentioned to them and informed of them. And they still denied the quote unquote allegations and charges. And so since I knew that that information was factual, since I knew that the information that was on those videos that had their images on it were them and what they were doing, since I was aware of that and it was, and it was uh, uh, relayed to me, that is why I exposed their names. Okay. This individual here willfully came forward. Willfully came forward. And this person that I'm uh, discussing or describing to you is not a believer. But this person came forward. Disclosed the information to me. For the purpose of exposing G. Craig Lewis, because G. Craig Lewis has been walking in and, and living in unrepentant sin for years. See, it's one thing when you and I struggle in sin of any kind and we're fighting against that and we confess and repent of those sins and we move on from that. Not this man. Not this man. This man has been living in unrepentant sexual sin and even perverted sexual sin for years. And I would say possibly for two decades. Unchecked, unaccountable, unrepented 
sin. So it is for that reason and that reason alone while I am, why I am expo exposing him for being a fraud, for being a charlatan, for being a manipulator, an abuser, a uh, victimizer. It is for those reasons why I am exposing him publicly. Because this is the same man who for decades would have, has done videos and, 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 and is attempting to do another video next year about issues going on in hip hop when his own house, when his own heart is defiled. Do you think that we should allow people like that to speak to the hearts and minds of God's people when they themselves are not walking in the very thing that they claim to teach? Let me just read to you Romans chapter two. Because I want to lay the biblical basis here before I disclose anything online to anyone. Romans chapter two, Paul writes to the Jews, to the moral Jew. You know, in chapter one, he's talking about the whole world is condemned. You know, the, the, the actually the unbeliever, excuse me, is condemned. Chapter two, he talks about the moral, the moral Jew is condemned. They're in sin. Chapter three, he says the whole world, Jew and Gentile are in sin. So, in, but in chapter two, he talks, he talks about, Paul addresses the moralistic Jew, the person who basically think they have their eyes dotted and T's crossed. And so in verse uh, 17, let me go down to verse, uh, well, I'll start verse 17 for context. But if you bear the name Jew and rely upon the law and boast in God and know his will and approve the things that are essential, being instructed out of the law and are confident that you yourself are a God to the blind, a light to those who are in darkness, a corrector of the foolish, a teacher of the immature, having in the law the embodiment of knowledge and of the truth, you therefore who teach another, do you not teach yourself? You who preach that you should not steal, do you steal? You who say that one should not commit adultery, do you commit adultery? You who abhor idols, do you rob temples? You who boast in the law through your breaking the law, do you dishonor God? For the name of God is blasphemed among you. you hear what Paul says? You're going around telling people this, telling people that, saying that you have this and saying that you have that, that you are that you are the one that's called to get people straight. That you're the one that are, that are, that are called that is to expose the darkness of the light. That you're the one that, 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 are, that is called to help the immature to become mature. And Paul says, you who are teaching other people to do these things, who's teaching you? Are you not teaching yourself? Are you not... Listening to your own sermons? Are you not taking in account what you're saying also applies to you, George? You go to church at the church and conference at the conference and, 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 and film recording at the recording, exposing all these things. Are you not looking at yourself, George? And so Paul says that the name of God, the, the, the God that you claim to serve is blasphemed. Because of you. In other words, the world looks at a person like G. Craig Lewis once exposed and says, see, this is the reason why I don't follow Christianity. Because all these people are frauds and fakes. They're phonies. So forth and so on. You who teach others, do you not teach yourself, Craig? Who's holding you accountable, Craig? See, this is the result. This is the result when any of us are unaccountable to God ordained means of authority and checks and balances. This is the result of that. And I'm not done dealing with George Craig Lewis. I'm just getting started. Because even after I expose this element of this man's life and his quote unquote ministry, there's still more, there's still more information Still more stories, still more um, experiences that have yet to be to be told how this man has affected and infected the lives of so many innocent people in the body of Christ that he claims to love and that he claims to to lead. So. 
how do we deal with, 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 with scandals such as this? How do we respond to images that are sexual in nature and that are pornographic? How do we respond to videos on hard drives from laptops that have sexual images and, 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 and women in compromising positions or taking uh, poses that are only reserved for that person's spouse and not the spouse of another? Should we reveal those things? Should we do we find a biblical precedent to to post those things online? You know, after thinking about it and after searching the scriptures, the Bible is called the Holy Bible. It's called the 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 Holy Scriptures for a reason. It's, it's set apart. It's not like it's not like uh, your worldly novel. It's not like the National Enquirer. It's not like your your Wendy Williams um, gossip uh, show. So that means we are to be set apart from the world and how we are to relate and how we are to uh, expose sin. And so I want to read, starting in the Old Testament, and we'll work my way through the New, just show you examples on how God dealt with and how God describes and discloses intimate, intimate relationships, um, sexual sin, um, perversion and immorality of different kinds. How does the Bible give us a picture on these kinds of issues? Uh, we can we can start here in Genesis chapter four. Verse one. May I lay the context for a second? Chapter four comes after chapter three, right? I know that was deep. Uh, and sin has now entered into the world because of what Adam did. Adam chose to disobey God, being our federal head. Sin didn't come into the world when Eve disobeyed. Sin came into the world because Adam disobeyed and, and ate of the fruit. And then now has plunged humanity into sin and the curse of the law. In chapter four, verse one, we find the first mention of sex. In chapter four, verse one, the Bible reads, now the man had relations with his wife, Eve, and she conceived and gave birth to Cain. Notice the scripture doesn't give any scatological language. It doesn't give any gutter talk. It doesn't give any any picture that will cause our minds to drift or to wonder or to have the eye gate now have indelible, indelible, indelible images, excuse me, in our minds that now we can't get rid of. Genesis 4 1 says. Adam had relations or in the King James says Adam knew his wife and she conceived and, and gave birth to a son and named him Cain. Now, that's one example. That's one example. Let me give you another example. Some of us may not even know this, but for those who do, bear with me. Genesis chapter 38. You know, remember, remember the story of Judah and Onan? Let me read it to you. Verse one, Genesis 38. And it came about at that time that Judah departed from his brothers and visited a certain Adullamite whose name was Hira. And Judah saw there a daughter of a certain Canaanite whose name was Shua. And he took her and went into her. Notice, he took her and went into her. Again, no scatological language. Again, no gutter talk. No pornographic uh, 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 images or or, or words as being used because the Holy Spirit of God uses words that are holy, gives us an image of what marriage is and what a sexual relationship is between a man and a woman. And even when those relationships become perverted, we don't find in scripture anywhere where words are used that would signify something that you and I now 
will be caused to sin in doing. What do I mean by that? We, we all know the word when we talk about sex or when we talk about making love, right? Some people that don't have the spirit of God or are not in control of their spirit will use language that is unfitting to describe sex or to describe a man's appendage or to describe a woman's genitalia. For the Christian, we're not to do that. So in verse two, the text says, and he took her and went into her. Verse three, so she conceived and bore a son. He named him Ur. Then she conceived again and bore a son and named him Onan. And she bore still another son and named him Shelah. And it was at Chezib that, he, that she bore him. Now Judah, verse six, took a wife for Ur, his firstborn, and her name was Tamar. But Ur, Judah's firstborn, was evil in the sight of the Lord. So the Lord took his life. Then Judah said to Onan, go into your brother's wife and perform your duty as a brother-in-law to her and raise up off offspring for your brother. During that time, there was no incest of things of that nature. OK, because the earth was not was not fully populated yet. OK, the Mosaic law has not come into effect. It didn't have anything restricting uh, people having sex or, or having sexual relations with their with their relatives. OK, this is this is where verse seven teaches. So it says, Ur, but Ur rather, Judah's firstborn was even inside of the Lord. So the Lord took his life. Then Judah said to Onan, go into your brother's wife and perform your duty as a brother-in-law to her and raise up offspring for your brother. And Onan knew, verse nine, that the offspring would not be his. So it came about when he went into his brother's wife, he wasted his seed on the ground in order not to give offspring to his brother. Now, we all know what that term and that word associated, what the scripture teaches means, right? We don't have to get into gutter talk to know that Onan withdrew himself from inseminating Tamar. We know what that means. So now in our minds, we've heard the terms that have been, that have been used to describe a person, to describe a man not finishing the sex act. But notice what the scriptures does not say. The scripture does not say what you and I would say in this world or people who are not being controlled by the spirit of God would say. The scripture says clearly that it came about that when he went into his brother's wife, meaning that he had sex, there was a copulation. He wasted his seed on the ground in order not to give offspring to his brother. Verse 10 says, but what he did was displeasing in the sight of the Lord. So he took his life also. Why? He took Onan's life because Onan wanted pleasure without procreation. That's why he killed him. He wanted, he wanted the pleasure of sex, but did not want to perform what that pleasure would produce, which would, would be to have an offspring. So he wanted the thrills and the joys of it without the responsibility that came with it and God killed him. But notice we don't see any, any vulgar language. We don't see any uh, uh, profane talk in the scriptures to describe what this man did, which was an offense and which was displeasing to God and God ended up killing him. Let me give you another example. Um, Ezekiel chapter 8 Ezekiel 8 verse 1 and it came about in the sixth year on the on the fifth day of the sixth month as I was sitting in my house with the elders of Judah sitting before me that the hand of the Lord God fell on me there then I looked and behold a likeness as the appearance of a man from his loins and downward. There was the appearance of fire and from his loins and upward, the appearance of brightness, like the appearance of glowing metal. And he stretched out the form of a hand and caught me by the lock of my beard. And the spirit lifted me up between earth and heaven and brought me into the visions of God to Jerusalem, to the entrance of the north gate 
of the inner court where the seat of the idol of jealousy, which provokes to jealousy, was located. And behold, the glory of God of Israel was there, like the appearance which I saw in the plain. Then he said to me, son of man, raise your eyes now toward the north. So I raised my eyes toward the north and behold, to the north of the altar gate was, an, was this idol of jealousy at the entrance. And he said to me, verse six, son of man, do you see what they are doing? The great abominations which the house of Israel are committing, are committing here that I should be far from my sanctuary. But yet you will see greater abominations. Notice what God is showing Ezekiel. He's showing Ezekiel perversions going on in the inner court, in the inner sanctuary. What's going on? Let's continue on. Verse seven. Then he brought me to the entrance of the court. And when I looked, behold, a hole in the wall. And he said to me, son of man, now dig through the wall. So I dug through the wall and behold, an entrance. And he said to me, go in and see the wicked abominations that they are committing here. So I entered and looked and behold, every form of creeping things and beasts and detestable things, which all with all the idols of the house of Israel were carved on the wall all around. And standing in front of them were 70 elders of the house of Israel, with Jazaniah, the son of Shaphan, standing among them, each man with his censer in his hand and the fragrance of the cloud of the incense rising. Then he said to me, son of man, do you see what the elders of the house of Israel are committing in the dark? Each man in the room of his carved images, for they say the Lord does not see us. The Lord has forsaken the land. And he said to me, yet you will see still greater abominations, which they are committing. Verse 14, then he brought me to the entrance of the gate of the Lord's house, which was, be, which was toward the north. Behold, women were sitting there weeping for Tammuz. And he said to me, do you see this son of man? Yet you will see greater abominations than these. Verse 16, then he brought me into the inner court of the Lord's house. And behold, at the entrance of the temple of the Lord, between the porch and the altar, were about 25 men with their backs to the temple of the Lord and their faces toward the east. And they were prostrating themselves eastward toward the sun. And he said to me, do you see this, son of man? Is it too light a thing for the house of Judah to commit to commit the abominations which they have committed here, that they have filled the land with violence and provoked me repeatedly? For behold, they are putting the twig to their nose. Therefore, I indeed shall deal in wrath. My eye will have no pity, nor shall I spare. And though they cry in my ears with a loud voice, yet I shall not listen to them. And you also remember the story with Nathan. Nathan confronts David about his adulterous affair with Bathsheba. And tells Nathan, I mean, Nathan tells David, this is what's going to happen to you. I'm, I'm, God's going to take your 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 concubines and your female servant. He's going to take them, and and someone close to you is going to uh, they're going to have sex with them, and they're going to do it before everyone in broad daylight. Because what you did in secret, God says through Nathan the prophet to David, I'm going to do it before the whole world publicly. But notice when you read that story. It doesn't talk about what these women were doing with Absalom. It doesn't talk about what Absalom was doing with these women. It doesn't describe any of the sex acts that were going on. We just knew what the word of God said was going to happen and it happened. Now, let me give you another verse. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 11. It says, and do not participate in the unfruitful deeds of darkness, but instead even expose them. Why? Verse 12 says, for it is disgraceful even to speak of the things which are done by them in secret. God says it's a disgrace. It's something that we should even want to engage in. Let me give you the ultimate, the ultimate picture. Our Lord Jesus Christ. 
Matthew 27, verse 28. Start there. Matthew chapter 27, verse 28. Jesus has been scourged. Uh, he's being mocked. He's, he's being prepared to be crucified. But in verse 27 of, of Matthew 27, excuse me, the text says, and the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the praetorium and gathered the whole Roman cohort around him. Verse 28, and they stripped him. That means they took all his clothes off. They stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him. Verse 38. Verse 35. Verse 35. And when they had crucified him, they divided his garments. They divided his garments among themselves, casting lots. You understand that Jesus was crucified naked. The crucifixion is not what you see on TV during the Easter, Easter you know, season. That wasn't the crucifixion that took place. Christ was crucified naked. His body was beaten. His, his genitals were exposed. And some accounts give record of those being crucified, being pierced in even the genital areas. The Roman crucifixion was a brutal, barbaric method of execution. They weren't hung with a loincloth wrapped around their waist. No, they were, they were hung naked. And we don't find in scripture what Jesus' genitalia looks like. We don't find in scripture anything mentioning of his body parts, private body parts, being exposed. Why? Because it's not important. That's why. And so is with that being said, I want to read to you the statements by, the, by, this, by this young lady regarding her relationship um, with, with G. Craig Lewis. Uh, this was in uh, 2012, I believe. And uh, I'm going to read the statement. And if I pause, it's because I want to make sure that I do not disclose anything. I, I pretty much redacted most of what I needed to say that does not need to be mentioned uh, publicly for the sake of confidentiality and also for the sake of... of um, um, keeping keeping my word. I asked this young lady the question who had this relationship with, uh, with G. Craig Lewis. I said, regarding your receipts, if you could send them to me, you have my word, I would keep your name and individuals in, uh, involved strictly uh, confidential. And the individuals involved, I'm talking about anybody that's, that was with her in this, in this uh, relationship. Not G. Craig Lewis and not other women that outside of this relationship had already been mentioned. So I asked her, has he, meaning, meaning George, has he ever mentioned a girl named Demona to you? Her answer, not Demona, but I remember Lois. I remember Lois. She says, I'm just watching the other videos of yours right now. And I had no idea that there were other sexual implications until after I messaged you this morning. I watched the Kelly Sosa confessional. I'm charging my own my old phone. I used to talk to him on now and I can look through there for old receipts. Now, let me just send a picture. Of uh, some things here. And bear with me. So, let's see here. This is the picture. Let's see if I can copy this. Hopefully this will take. I 
have to put it. I'll put it in the chat. I'll put it in the chat. Um, I'll put it in the chat later because it's not letting me do it on my on my laptop here. But in the in the in the statement, there's a picture of an ABC shirt and the phone. This is what it says here. I'm charging my old phone. I used to talk to him on, and I, I can look through there for old receipts. She says, just know. I support what you're doing and I'm sharing your video so you can do what it you can do what you will with the info I gave you and just know I'm behind you. I've been paying attention for years now silently and occasionally search keywords to see if anyone has exposed him yet. I just happened to search quote G Craig Lewis exposed and bam, I found all of this. I am curious as to what his wife's take is on this since she is obviously getting cheated on. I hope everyone gets out of this man's stronghold. One statement there. Here is the next statement. This is the statement she said, the, the shirt he sent me and the old phone he paid for clearer, quote unquote, clearer pics. I'm gonna post that picture and the phone in, in, the, in the chat after this live, because it's actually on my phone here. I can probably actually put the picture uh, link on there for some reason I can't do it here on my uh, on my laptop so I don't want to waste no time doing that one all right she says quote I was 29 when I started talking to him 30 when we met in person I have grown tremendously since then and am sober I still have my old phone and I'm looking through everything to see if there's anything I can give you I did a mass delete of my email two years ago, not even thinking about the previous emails from him, but I am one to screenshot stuff or take pictures of pictures. So I have to have something. She says, I know I had taken a pic of the Valentine's gift. He had delivered to me in 2012 edible arrangements. This is where G Craig Lewis purchased a Valentine's day gift for this young lady. And in the gift, the card said, quote, eat them all, end quote, dash G. And she says, I'm looking for that. Now, let me just offer, uh, let me just make a, a, a brief statement here and brief commentary on this. I've talked to other individuals, so she's not the only one that has had information. And because of their disgust and because of regret, and because of uh, just just utter grief and trying to get over that ordeal, they have thrown away things. And now coming back and saying, I wish I could have kept this, wish I could have kept that, because in their minds, what was told to me from other individuals just like this, this lady here, they never thought that anyone would try to hold him accountable. They never thought that anyone would ever try to confront him or expose him or call him out because, oh, this is G. Craig Lewis. Nobody's going to go against G. Craig Lewis because he's the one who did the truth behind hip hop. Who would dare go against G. Craig Lewis? And so they just basically just gave up any hope of any any optimism of, of him ever being brought to accountability or being confronted with this. So she's not the only one that has, has said this before. Okay. Um, still quoting she says I'm sorry I looked through everything and I'm not finding anything I must have deleted pics and everything years ago in an attempt to put him behind me see uh, she says as far as the PayPal for some reason I can't go back past 2015 uh, if you remember in the in the other other uh, video I did regarding uh, this lady um, she mentioned that, that G Craig gave her money using the church's PayPal account using EX Ministries PayPal account to give her money. She says, maybe if I pull it up on the desktop version instead of a mobile version, I will look again. She said, I could have sworn I screenshotted that though. I'm sorry that I can't be of more help, but even if my claim has to remain quote unquote alleged, your video or my statement will ring a bell with quite a few people. He's sick, like literally. He told me he used to hear voices, would be abnormally paranoid and obsessed over everything anyone said about him. It was only in the last 10 years, and I don't believe schizophrenia will be just uh, backing like that. So just be careful if he had mentioned harming you. Personally, I would push him down a flight of stairs if I see him again. 
I asked her a question, I believe. Uh, do you have any of the gifts in your possession? Her answer was, quote, the gifts he sent mostly were his own products because he thinks the world of himself or acts like it. He sent me some of his DVDs and an ABC shirt, his book, which had grammatical errors, a candle and, and the chocolate covered strawberries for Valentine's Day. Um, I asked her, do you have any of these items in your possession? She says, I'm contacting uh, them to get previous records. She's referring to PayPal. And then she says, um, I got PayPal in the first place so he could send me the money for the new phone. I have the ABC shirt and phone. I do have other old phones, though, if I can find them. I asked her this question. If your relationship with George wasn't sexual, what was it besides an emotional one? Answer, fooling around a little, touchy-feely, but no internal stuff. Question, oral, exposing body parts, I asked. Answer, we saw each other unclothed, heavy petting, I guess you would call it, three times. But mostly we talked all day, every day, long distance, and just the private info he shared with me about his feelings, like what scared him, his insecurities, and his wife saying the lost puppy thing was very personal. I feel like he was definitely attracted to me physically, but he was filling some emotional void or something, or maybe he just needed some narcissistic supply. Either way, it was wrong for both of us, and I wouldn't involve myself in anything like that now. Now, for those of you just joining me, I just produced receipts, and that's just one of them. I'm going to post the pictures of that in the, uh, in the live, and hopefully I can try to, uh, let's see, let's see if I can try to pull one of them. I, I, let me see if I can try to pull one of them up here. Let's see. Uh... Let's see. I'm trying to share it here. And let's wait and see for this one. Let's see if it takes. Okay, and if not, I'll just I'll share it in a live. Uh, later. Because I never can do it on my phone. For some reason, I let me do it on my laptop. Um, but for those of you who are joining me right now, uh, I just was discussing the individual uh, that G. Craig Lewis has had an inappropriate relationship with. One of the women that he's had an inappropriate relationship with, others he's had sexual relationships with. And I've also shared and explained uh, my biblical reason on why, um, if and or when any videos or, or sexual images are to emerge, I will not produce those images publicly for biblical reasons. And I gave you, uh, I gave you Genesis 38, one through 10. I gave you Ezekiel eight, one through 18. I gave you Ephesians five, 11 and 12. And I gave you the, the story of our Lord in Matthew 27, 28 and 35. And that's just some of the instances and some of the texts that we see when there is sin involved. In fact, you can use the story of uh, Absalom uh, raping his his I mean, uh, Amnon, excuse me, Amnon uh, raping his half sister Tamar. We all know that story. But again, we don't see any any uh, pornographic descriptions. We see what the scripture says. He forced himself on her. He he took her forcefully. Those those words are rendered in the in the scriptures. But we don't we don't see what he did. We don't read in the scriptures what type of sex acts were committed. And that should be the scripture should be our barometer. 
It should be our guide when we deal with sexual sin. For any of you who want to have pictures to prove what I'm saying is true, you have an issue with lust. Why would you want to see pornography? Why would you want to see something that would cause you or others to stumble for the sake of research? Yeah, I agree with you, Larnell. They probably wouldn't believe it anyway. Listen, Thomas didn't believe that Jesus had risen if he wasn't able to touch his hands and put his finger through his side. And some of y'all will say, well, I ain't gonna believe, I ain't gonna believe what Sickle talk about until I see pictures. Well, let me ask you this question. Um, did you have to believe that R. Kelly uh, peed on that girl by actually watching the video? Or could you trust the witnesses that were actually in the courtroom who saw the evidence? And you took their word for it. And you weren't even there. Now, some of you in your perverted mind, you just had to go watch the video. You just had to go see for yourself. I, I didn't have to see a man peeing on a girl to know that R. Kelly has issues. Didn't have to see that. I mean, think about it. Why, why do we have to? Why do we have to see things that are pornographic or borderline pornographic? To prove that something is, is true. Why we can't just take the words of those who we trust, mind you, mind you, who we trust and whose reputation is credible and their reputation is backed by the testimonies of two or three witnesses. Can we not use the scriptures for that? I'm just saying. Just saying. Just asking. Because this happened. Craig is guilty. Craig should step down. And he's and listen, she is just one. I just I, all you gotta do is read my read my email. Anyone that tries to discount what I've said, what I've said, and what I, and what I am saying, then you haven't done your research. You haven't done your research. Why do we have to see wickedness to know that something was done wickedly? Why? Especially coming from people who have no reason to lie. But some of you would rather believe G. Craig, whose reputation and credibility, I believe, is shot. I mean, this is a man who does not even respect his own wife. This is the man who had a woman who he had sex with, buy him a shirt, and he parades it in the church where his wife is sitting and then mentions the wife's name, which is Demona Culbertson, that's her name, mentions her name before the whole entire congregation and says, Demona bought me this. But you tell everybody else you don't want them buying you anything for, for your birthday, but you have no problem with this woman who's not your wife buying you clothes and then you wear these clothes as a badge of honor. This is the same man who gets his sexual kicks off of what a woman does with their tongue. Who's not his wife, him and his son, Landon. That was that was verified by witnesses who saw that happen. But you, you question what I say. And question my integrity and question my character, but you don't you don't question what G. Craig has done when you have had witness statement after witness statement, testimony after testimony, story after story of what this man has done and is doing to women. And some of you still support him. Let me let me say this also tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow, I, I believe around six o'clock um, Central Standard Time. Uh, finally, I'm going to have 
a brother come on Facebook Live and share his experience and his testimony. You don't want to miss it. You do not want to miss it. Because it's time for the men to step forward and to come forward and to speak up against this man. To be bold. And so I appreciate this brother's boldness. He is a former member of ABC. He will be joining me tomorrow on Facebook Live. Do not miss it because it is, it is going to be just as informative and just as insightful and just as challenging for all of us to start holding these people accountable who claim to be pastors, but are now disqualified for being such because they don't fit the biblical requirements of that. Now, I have, I have another statement I want to read. Just received this one. This is an email. I'm going to leave this, these uh, people's names uh, anonymous. Uh, but let me, let me say this. This, again, should show you that people are coming forward and speaking out. Uh, and let me just put this plug in there right now. If you are out of that place and you are needing to find a place to go to worship the true and living God, please email me. Or what you can do is you can just go to ninemarks.org. Go to ninemarks.org and then click this click the search I mean click the church search engine on that website and then click your location where you live and you will find biblical churches in your area. Or what you can do you can go to Google and you can Google expository churches in my area. And you can find biblical expository churches in your area. You do not have to think or believe that ABC, which is another bad cult. Not only, I know they call themselves Adam and Believers Council, but they're not. They're another bad cult. They're not the only place that you can go to. And listen, the true family of God, I promise you, you have yet to see the true family of God in action until you step out and do by faith what you know in your heart and your mind is calling you to do. And that is be connected with other like minded brethren, other like minded believers in the body of Christ that will love on you. That will minister to you, that will come alongside you, that will help you, that will uh, uh, um, help you heal through this pain. But you must take the first step. I understand it is painful. Listen, I've talked to so many people. I, I am not lying to you. My wife can attest to this. My phone has not ceased from being uh, from being busy. Whether through text messages, whether through phone calls, emails, inboxes, DMs, doesn't matter what it all because people are looking for help. And let me just tell you this. I'm not I'm not the go to person. OK, I'm a fellow brother like you who wants to help my fellow brothers and sisters in Christ, because if I were in that situation, God forbid, I would want other people to come alongside and help me. So what I am doing, I'm going to be deferring people to other people that I trust and say, hey, you know what? I'm not in that area. Let me find this person and see if they can get with you and help you do this. You know what I'm saying? Because I don't want to be like Moses. Remember Moses in, in, in Exodus 18, he was he was getting burnt out. He was getting burnt out. And Jethro's father had to say, bro, what you doing? He said, man, man, I got I to gotta serve the people, man. I, you know, he said, I've been up since, since sun up to sundown, man. They come to me with their cases and come to me with their things and, and I got to help them. And Jethro said, bro, you can't do that. You can't do that. Th that, that this, you're going to burn yourself out. You're going you're gonna to kill yourself doing that. Listen, sometimes doing a good thing is not always a godly thing. And let's just be honest. Helping people is a good thing. But is it a godly thing? Because if I do this, what am I what am I risking? What am I, you know, setting aside? And if you're not careful, and I'm speaking to myself now, mind you, speaking to myself too. If we're not careful, then we'll start looking at this and start ignoring the things that we should be focusing our attention on as well, too. That's family, that's responsibilities, that's other areas that we have to deal with. And so I know for myself, I have to balance it out because I have a shepherd's heart by God's grace. I have a shepherd's heart 
And, and whether, listen, whether I ever pass through a church again, my goal and my desire is to see people fed the word of God. Regardless of what you think about me, regardless of whether you like my temperament, whether, listen, regardless of whether you like my personality, it doesn't matter. My heart's desire is to see people free. It's to see people free. It's like John. Like, I have no greater joy than to see my children walk in the truth. That's what John said. I have no greater joy to see God's people understand God's word and to live it out in this world. That's that is what that is what every listen. That's what every true under shepherd desires. No true under shepherd wants to see their people that God has given to them and entrusted in their care walking around, staying in immature diapers, walking around, spilling spiritual milk, walking around, making spiritual messes. Nobody, no, no, no under shepherd wants that for their people. When, when I was passing, when I was passing years ago, I would tell people, hey, listen, what I say, you check it with the book. You go book, chapter and verse. If it's not in the scriptures, you don't you don't have to listen to it. But if it is, you're in the biblical obligation to 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 obey it. Because it ain't me. I'm just God's spokesman. I just speak for God. And listen, so are you. If you are a Christian, you are God's ambassador. You are Christ's representative here on this earth. You have just as much right, just as much as authority to say what the word of God says, just like any other pastor does. Why? Because we have the word of God in our hands. So I, I'm not doing this for, for likes. I'm not doing this for money. I'm not doing this for prestige. I'm not doing this for power. I'm doing this to raise awareness. I'm doing this to help people in the body of Christ to wake up. This man is a spiritual terrorist and he needs to be taken out. And how do you take him out? You take him out one at a time. You take him out with the truth of God's word. You take him out by exposing his statements, exposing his teaching, and you take him out by stop supporting him. Let him get a job. Let his wife see what it feels like to work for a living. Bring him down the way he's brought other people who work hard for a living down. To my knowledge, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I was informed this man drives a Ferrari. A Ferrari. A fur. Raw re. He used to have a Maserati. Now he has a Ferrari. With what money? With your money. This man is a millionaire and he made his millions manipulating God's people. And let me tell you something. God is not mocked. God ain't sleeping. God will deal with George Craig Lewis. I guarantee it. How you have a Ferrari when you got people that cannot even afford to put food on their table at your church, bro? How you have a Ferrari or any kind of exotic foreign vehicle when you have people that can't even afford to pay their rent? How do you have a Ferrari? How? When you have people who are struggling to make ends meet. I'm, I'm trying to understand that. Y'all can help me understand this, please. How, how do you, how are you a millionaire and some of the people in your church, probably be more so, are living miserable lives financially? How, what do you mean by that, Sicko? Because he puts these burdens on his people by telling them that wives cannot get a job outside of the home. And oh, he never said that. He guilt strip women into not wanting to get a job outside of the home. Why? Because that's outside of their creation role. That is not outside of your creation role. That is not outside of your creation role, woman of God. You are a helper to your husband. What helps your husband is for you to help him. 
The Bible says two are better than one, for they have a return on their labor. I'm sick, you sound angry. Yeah, I am angry. I'm angry because I see people and I hear conversations with people every day. Every day. Who are being manipulated into believing that they are not blessed, that they are not doing what God has called them to do if they're not doing it the way that G. Craig Lewis tells them to do it. And that is a lie from the pit of hell. Derek said, I remember the Maserati when I visited in 2013 and they took us out to eat. Yeah, Derek, I remember the Maserati too because I was there in 2016. I remember the Maserati, the same Maserati that he had, that he lied and said that I wanted to go out to lunch with him and G. Craig and, and all that crap. And I never even told that to him, ever. Listen, you want to know if your pastor loves you? Watch how he lives before you. That's how you know. That's how you know. Yeah, April had a Maserati. I, I, listen, I saw that with my own two eyeballs. Now I'm being told he has a Ferrari. And Delilah said he has a, he has a, he has a tricked out Jeep. This man is so arrogant. I haven't even got to the email yet I want to read to y'all. So just stay tuned. But let me get this out. This man is so arrogant. This man is so prideful. This man is so unteachable. That when he has his heroes, quote unquote heroes, which I call zeros because they're not biblical men. There may be some in there and they just don't know they need to be taught. But for the most part, they're not. During Q&A sessions that he has, and some of you, Lonell, you probably can, can attest to this and other men who have gone to ABC, in those hero meetings, when there's a Q&A going on, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to show you the scripture that I have to support this one and why I'm going in on them. The scripture that I have to go in on them with. Um, in those Q&A meetings, men will ask him questions about things that he said or wanting him to further elucidate what he meant by what he had said in, in earlier sessions or teachings or sermons, quote unquote. And you know what he'll tell them? He, he doesn't do what a true shepherd of God's flock does. He doesn't say, well, thank you for that question, brother. Uh, let, me, let, me, let me see what I, what I said here. Or let me, let, let's, let's look at the verse together and see what the scripture teaches about that. No, 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 no. What he does is he'll say, uh, uh, do you have part four? Get part four. Get part four. Oh, you don't have part eight? Get part eight. Oh, you don't have part six? It's in part six, man. I ain't about to teach all that again. Get part six. And these people, these people have given their time and their treasures, their money to buy DVDs that, they, that you already have made your millions off of. And now they're asking you a question about something. And now you want them to spend more money to buy a DVD when you're standing right there in their face and could answer the question? Unbelievable, to say the least. That's not a true shepherd of God. Well, what do you mean by that? Say, oh, well, I'm about to show you. Second Peter, chapter two. Yeah, I remember that. He preached the book of Enoch in a, t in a true behind hip hop and said that it was from Genesis. Then he also said God told him the contents of the book of Enoch without him reading it. So he essentially preached a whole message based off of what he said the Lord told him exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Jeremiah said these people these people make up things out of your own imagination, not from the, not from the mouth of the Lord. He's very esoteric. Very esoteric. He's not a he listen, he's not an expositor. He's an imposter. But in 2 Peter chapter 2 verse 1 
It says, but false prophets will also will also excuse me, but false prophets will also arose among the people, just as there will be also false teachers among you who will secretly introduce, listen, secretly, stealthily introduce destructive heresies, even denying the master who bought them, bringing swift destruction upon themselves. And Lotus, verse two, and many will follow their sensuality. And because of them, false teachers, the way of the truth will be maligned. Verse three, and in their greed, they will exploit you with false words. Their judgment from long ago is not idle and their destruction is not asleep. Let me read this email. All right, been on this for an over an hour now. This writer says this. Yeah, <laughs> say, it, say, it, say it again, Kevin. <laughs> say it again. It is what it is. I, I, I go by what I have. And trust God with the results, brother. Uh, this person says, quote, listen, listen, quote, praise the Lord, saints and brothers and sisters in the body of, of Jesus Christ. Greetings. First and foremost, my family has never attended George's church. Excuse me, one for a second. I gave me some drink. Hey, can I ask him a drink, please? I'm thirsty. Hello? Thank you. Getting a little parched. Um, no, I'm not done. I need something to drink. Thank you. First and foremost, my family has never attended George's church. Still quoting the email. But we have invested just as much of, or more than most have. My wife introduced me to the truth behind hip hop 11 years ago. I was in a place in my walk with God that I wanted more of God, but struggled due to fatherlessness. Juice. George has become for men exactly what men lack, which is identity. Instead of George pointing men to God, he points men to himself. After watching the first DVD, it was life changing. I threw away CD, DVD. That was a stronghold and was delivered by God. George became the steps to salvation. Listen to this. This is what this man's experience was. This person's experience was. Their family's experience was. Listen. Looking back, I found myself always asking the unbeliever, do you know who George is? And I began to talk about the truth behind hip hop versus the sacrificial lamb who is Jesus Christ, the son of God, who's blessed forever what we lost after we invested in george dvds we became strange in our behavior for example we would be in grocery stores and would run out because music I mean, excuse me we would run out because we heard michael jackson playing on the speakers i even lost jobs because i didn't want music to play in my spirit so i would take off headsets to avoid the music playing into my spirit I have contacted George on many occasions to get more information and understanding on uh, his DVDs. But he never responded. Make sure I got the right one here. Make sure I got the right one here. Let's see. Is this the right one? I think so. It's getting good, ain't it? Yeah. Okay. After seeing George attend basketball games on, on Twitter, I knew that I lost jobs, etc. for nothing. George only, only ever responded when I would ask questions about movies or sports, but never would respond on Bible topics. The visit. After a few years, we decided to, to book George's engagement to have him preach at the church we were attending at the time. Due to the funds and expenses, our pastor invited us that we, excuse me, our pastor advised us, excuse me, that we uh, would have to finance the trip if we wanted George to come. After the request was submitted to have George booked, I received a call from Aaron Lewis. Aaron sent me an email that included a list of items and specifics such as drinking water that George would only drink, which is smart water. He would only drink smart water. 
First class seats. First class seats. American Airlines for George. Five star hotel requirement. And a request for white vans to store all his equipment as well as SWAT his entourage. We were bewildered when we seen what was required to hear the word of God. But we still continue to try to fund George's travel to Arizona. The cost was a sum of nearly $10,000. What's funny is that George doesn't charge individuals to attend his engagements. But in the background, he is charging the host or pastor, a believer, a hefty fee. Nevertheless, I negotiated with Aaron for maybe three days until my waves and I decided the cost was too high. George became so wrapped up in exposing those in the hip-hop industry that he became the very thing he has exposed. If you will journey back to, through all the DVDs and listen to all his messages, Affectation, Antichrist Superstar, Detained for Entry, the first DVD is the warning, and the second DVD is for you to exit either from your church, location, and become a member of the Adamant Believers Council. I believe that the teachings and pressure George places on individuals to join ABC causes dissimulation in your marriage. It causes dissimulation rather than your marriage, especially if a family cannot afford to move. And that has been so many people. George comes to Arizona. My wife and I traveled to Tucson, Arizona to finally meet George. It was my first time meeting him in person and my wife's third. Yes, the engagement was free, but our hotel stay, food, uh, gas, etc. was not, which, which is what we chose to do. However, looking back now on what's required to have George come to preach, it makes you wonder if it was all for money. In addition to its astronomically high fees, George also receives large offerings and sells his DVDs at every function and recording. After the engagement, Heir of Man 2, we took pictures of with him, and it seemed that he should have been more concerned with praying, uh, praying, with, with praying uh, for others or giving some words of encouragement. Instead, everyone, including my wife and I, were enthusiasts of George's celebrity status. Side note, while at the show, quote unquote, for George, there was an individual, which was a woman who advised George and his entourage she had never seen any of his DVDs before, and without compassion, George told the young lady she needed to buy all the DVDs, and she did exactly that. In this walk, I have struggled with pride due to the teachings George produces regarding the creation role, and since the truth about who George really is came out, I have been delivered from his untruths. I pray that God will continue to heal all who have been led astray by EX Ministries and that God will restore anything lost. Not all blame is George Lewis's. According to the word of God, Jeremiah 17, 5, thus saith the Lord, cursed be the man that trusteth in man and maketh flesh his arm and whose heart departeth from the Lord. Therefore, we must put on the full armor of God. Matthew 15, verse 14, leave them alone. They are blind gods. If the blind lead the blind, both will fall into a pit. End of quote. Now, I'm done for tonight. Um, hopefully, based on the information that you already heard, the testimonies that you have already heard, and shortly... Uh, the the uh, and, and and shortly the picture of this uh, individual uh, that shared that, that, that trusted me to share this picture and again I redacted the image because it's not about it's not about that I want you to see that this 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 picture was sent to G. Craig Lewis and the picture that was sent to G. Craig Lewis wasn't just sent to his email. It was sent to his church's email. 
See, and listen, this is a warning for all of us. Pride makes us stupid. Pride blinds us. For a man to have a woman who's not his wife send him inappropriate pictures or to have a woman who's not his wife send him sex pics and send it to your email address that belongs to your church. For a man to send a person who's not your wife or woman uh, uh, money through a church account, that's theft. That's defrauding. And I hope and pray to God that those of you who are watching this right now, because I know most of you that are in here are not watching to be edified. Most of you are in here because you are on assignment from G. Craig Lewis to watch this video. And I hope that you're off of your social media, quote unquote, fast. So they wait. I pray that the spirit of God will open your eyes and your ears and your heart to hear the truth and that you will come out of that place. And I thank God that some are coming out. Some are coming out more than what than what I can I can imagine. Um, and, I, and I'll just say this: We need to be praying for those who are still there and want to get out, but are afraid to come out. That's what we need to be praying for. We need to be praying for that. Yeah, Lonnie. No, that smart that smart water ain't helping them at all. It sure isn't. It sure is not. Um. So again, if you if you need information, if you would like to get a copy of the email that I had sent out uh, exposing G. Craig Lewis and the and the women and just some of the women that were mentioned in the uh, the blog. Again, you can uh, email me at Seiko Woods, S-A-I-K-O, Woods with an S, at yahoo.com. That's Seiko Woods at yahoo.com. And also, if you would like to purchase any of the book, chapter, and verse merchandise, uh, don't email me. Inbox me on Facebook under my name and request uh, uh, you know, the, the uh, merchandise catalog, and we'll send you that information and get your orders uh, made for that. All right. Uh, so again, yeah. Summary. Get out of ABC. That's the summary. Get out of ABC. Do not turn back. Don't even give it a second look. Get out and stay out. God will deliver you. God will help you find a place that will minister to you and to your family for the glory of God. ABC is not a church. ABC is a cult. And it's only by the grace of God that those of you who have come out, you've come out because God opened your eyes to see for you to get out. All right. So I'm done. Join us tomorrow night. Uh, I'm going to have my, my special guest. First time having a brother uh, that will be coming out and speaking out and coming forward. Uh, who is a former member of ABC. 6 p.m. Central Standard Time here on Facebook Live. All right. So you guys have a great evening. Y'all know the drill. Whatever you do, do all take the glory out of God. God bless.